Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Cheetosh. My name is Chris, and today we're going over Lookout on Parenting here, the survival guide for the single parent by my friend Ted Moss III. Continuing on with part two of the book, Getting Through the Day, and today we're going to be discussing After the Pickup, When You Get Home. And I like the title of this chapter, Home Again, Home Again, Jiggity Jig. So this one is all about how to make a house a home. So when you get back home, how your kids should treat the house, what your kids should do in the house, how to go about making your kids feel like this is a place, this isn't just for comfort, but this is a place to build and have a sense of community. Um, Before we talk about that, let's talk about what we talked about last time which was the pickup so you drop your kids off and now you have the pickup so what did we talk about we said that when you pick somebody up pick up your kids it should be just a very quick what's up not anything that shows that you overly miss them or shows any too much emotion so ted says in the 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 chapter here in the first bullet point What's up? Not, I missed you so badly. When you use my, I missed you so badly, now you're you're kind of asking for a difficult drop off the next time because your kid is going to kind of try to emulate the affection that you have and that emotion that you have that they're going to now not even want to be out of your sight because you said you miss them. They don't want, that to happen again. So just a really quick what's up. Again, don't make it a big deal. Like we said last time, this is going to be something that you do, you know, for for many, many times throughout your child's life. Act like you've been there before. Act like act like you've been there before and act like you're going there again. That's the quote. Uh, next bullet point here, take immediate interest in their accomplishments. So when you pick them up, you know, take your time to, and have them kind of explain to you what they did throughout the day, what they accomplished th- throughout the day, you know, just to gain a perspective on their world. You want to accent the positives, avoid the negatives as much as you can. So this goes, you know, for when your child's explaining what they did during the day, stay away from gossip, stay away from being critical of other students or the adults, you know, um, even like your child's failures throughout the day, maybe even too. like you don't want to, don't dwell on those negative things, just accent the positives, address them, but then kind of, you know, stick Stick to the path of just focusing on the good things that happen throughout your child's day. Four, give them a time to say, give them time to say goodbye. So we talked about in this chapter how, in this section where, again, the time perception between toddlers and adults and your toddler is not going to realize it's time to go until they see your face. They're more aware of the environmental cues of, of time. So when they see you, they're going to know, oh, it's the end of the day. It's time for me to go, you know, or, you know, see, they'll see the moon come out and they'll say, oh, okay, it's time for bed. You know, whereas for us, we would look down at our clock and say, oh, it's nine o'clock. Party's just getting started. <laughs> So by you showing up when you do, there is going to be times where you take them by surprise and they're not expecting it, even though the the big hand on the clock is saying, hey, it's time to leave. So when when that happens, just give them time to conclude everything they're doing, say goodbye to the friends, new friends they've made, say goodbye to the teacher, caregiver, caregiver what have you. And then... On the ride home, you review what happened during the day. And Ted again points out that this isn't a time period where you, you know, let's say maybe like play the music, go off in your own world. No, you talk to your child on that car ride home. You know, this should be a time of review. 
Uh, this should not be a time of any punishment for anything bad that happened that your child did, anything negative your child did throughout the day at daycare, school, or whatever. Use this time to, again, let your child share with you what you did and also let your, let yourself come to grips, maybe not come to grips, but formulate a plan on how you're going to address any certain issues that were brought up by the caregiver or the teacher or whatever it was. And then that way, by the time you get home, you've cooled off a little bit, right? Maybe you were angry. Now you're a little bit less angry. You can kind of think about the situation a little more clearly and have that conversation with your child. All right, so that was the pickup. Now we're going to be talking about, again, how to make your house a home. And number one, Ted says, assign a chore to everyone. Oh boy, chores. I remember I hated these. I hate chores. But you know, Ted brings up some good points in this chapter on how a home should both incorporate comfort and ownership. So your children need to feel like they're paying into the investment and not just reaping the benefits of it, right? They got to be able to support the benefits of it and realize that, hey, I'm what I put into this household benefits the entire household, not just me. I benefit from it too, but we have this thing called the family where everybody gives in to the, the structure of the family. I remember, oh gosh, what was his name? Oh uh, God, Werner Erhard, yes, talked about a relationship like a separate being from the two people in the relationship. So you give to this separate being called a relationship. And maybe that's how this can be thought of too. You're giving to this entity called family and you're going to get some things out of it too, but everybody else is also going to get benefits from it as well. So you do things for this entity called the family. So it reaffirms who your family is and that strong bond, that strong connection, and that sense of community. Ted brings up here, if if you want to make a friend, you ask them to do something for you. And I kind of, and Ted talks about it in this chapter, where I kind of had this backwards. If you want to make a friend, you do something for somebody else. But when you ask somebody to do something for you, they actually have to decide that the friendship is worth them giving up time to do other things, to do this task that you ask them. So that's how you know somebody truly cares about you, is that they're, they're able to do something for you. At the end of the day, doing chores for your toddlers, you know, and again, these start off something simple. Uh, and then kind of build up from there. But you're you're really connecting your toddlers to the place you live. And again, to that sense of community. It's important to know, too, that the chores should be things that benefit the entire household, not just things that benefit the child. So, for example, you know, put your shoes away, which is really super important. They should be doing that, too. But that is specific to the child. Now, something that would be specific to the entire family would be maybe, you know, clean up the living room, you know, or um, put away, a clean up the dinner table, right? Remove everything from the dinner table or something simple like, oh, fold the napkins at, at dinner times, something like that. So that's for assign a chore, to everyone. Next, take 10 to chill. Take 10 to chill. So time where you can relax with your whole family together, and it should be done after the chores. <laughs> so don't wait. Don't relax right when you get home, right? Don't just get everything out of the way, and then you can relax, then you can feel better, right? So when you relax, though, and you take this time to chill, do it with your kids. Do it with your family. And it doesn't have to be long, like it, like it says in the title there, 10, just, you know, 10 minutes. 
your kids, as they grow older, you know, when they're infants, you hold them. You're constantly holding them. Then as they get older, you're doing less and less of that. So this moment to chill and relax with them and not have any distractions or technology, nothing, just you and the kids, the focus is going to be on the people in that space in the the connection that the people have within that space again the entity of a family so how do kids realize this connection that they have with adults with their mom and dad ted is kind of getting at here that it's through being held physical touch now as they grow older you have to kind of still show them that the connection is strong so this is where this time to chill with them is so important because everything gets hyper-focused on everything that's happening within that space, right? And again, no distractions. So it could just be, you know, you're lying there with your kids talking about certain things, certain topics. That's going to strengthen that connection. What's not going to strengthen it is if you introduce the TV, cell phones, tablets, video games, etc. Again, just 10 minutes. 10 minutes, five minutes, just a little bit of time just to chill with your kids. And last thing, how to make a house a home, let them play while you work. And this isn't just play like structured play. Ted really advocates here for just letting kids do something on their own. Without any structure, let them come up and use their imagination to you know, f- f- solve their own puzzles or f- go through their own adventures. It teaches them that there's no right or wrong way to play. And it kind of teaches them to think a little bit out of the box and not rely on just like external stimulus to kind of come up with like new things, new ideas. Now, there's a couple rules with this. It should be without destruction. They should be doing things that can't hurt them. And trying to temper the use of technology, and again, this TV, cell phones, computers, video games, tablets, etc. Try to temper that and try to not rely on it too much. And Ted talks about it here where he's saying that there is kind of like an over-reliance on this kind of technology where you use it to basically babysit your kids. And he doesn't advocate for getting rid of it totally because there's still some good stuff on there. You can find good documentaries, good information, um, news, weather. uh, um, And he even points out here too, like things just culturally happening. You know, think about when people watch the moon landing or watch like a president's speech, you know. So there are good things on the TV. But, I I mean, I'm just going to go on a limb and say large majority, not really good, especially for a kid. So you kind of have to watch, watch the TV time, watch the video game time, and have them just play Without it, come up with new games on their own. It's going to be super important in their development. Again, teach them to think outside the box, solve problems, just really hit at the artistic part of their mind. You know, Ted talks about how he would give his kids blank sheets of paper and coloring utensils versus giving them like coloring books. So they would have to come up with their own drawings their own shapes what have you and you know this could make a big difference later in life just being able to think creatively come up with solutions on the spot improvise etc so anyway guys that was it this this was a short chapter on um how to make a house a home uh next week we're we're almost done with part two next week we will have we'll do the next section um how to make ready for the feast. So all about uh, dinner time with your kids. Um, yeah, th- thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, really, really appreciate it. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave them down in the comments. Um, check out the blog too. 
uh, we will have a post out for this episode as well. So check out that blog. And that's going to do it for today, guys. My name is Chris. This has been Cheat Tash. Take care.